Cisco switches support the DHCP service. If you have a Cisco switch in your network, you can use it to configure and run a DHCP server. To explain the configuration steps, I will use Packet Tracer. It is a network simulator software. No matter whether you use simulator software or real Cisco devices, the process of configuring and testing a DHCP server on a Cisco switch is the same. Drag a Cisco switch to the workspace. Add one more generic wireless access point to simulate a real-life network. Connect the Cisco switch with the access point. Now we need to add some end devices. We will configure and use these devices as DHCP clients. Add some wireless devices as well. These wireless devices will connect with the access point. Connect PCs with the switch. Use automatic connection type. It automatically selects and uses the correct cable to connect devices. By default, laptops do not have wireless LAN cards. To connect them to the access point, we need to install a wireless LAN card on them. Click the laptop icon. Power off the laptop. Remove the Ethernet port. Add a wireless LAN card. Power on the laptop. Now repeat the same steps on the second laptop. When we install a wireless LAN card on the laptop and power it on, it automatically connects to the access point. Now this lab is ready. But, before we configure a DHCP server in this lab, let us understand the meanings of important configuration settings. A DHCP pool is a collection of IP configurations we want to assign to DHCP clients. Each IP configuration contains a unique IP address, the default gateway's IP address, and the DNS server's IP addresses. An IP range is a range of IP addresses we want to assign to clients. In it, the first and last IP addresses have special meanings. The first address is known as the network address. The last address is known as the local broadcast ID. The DHCP server does not offer these addresses to the clients. If you don't want to assign a few addresses from the range, you can configure them as excluded addresses. DHCP servers do not assign excluded addresses. This feature allows us to configure static IP addresses on critical network resources such as servers, printers, and routers. If a local host wants to send a data packet to a host that is not available in the local network, it sends the data packet to the default gateway. Typically, this is the IP address of the router's interface that is directly connected to the local network. DNS servers allow hosts to access network resources by using their names instead of their IP addresses. The least duration defines the validity of the IP configuration. A DHCP client can use the assigned IP configuration until its validity expires. Once the validity period is expired, the client needs to obtain a new IP configuration from the server. By default, an IP configuration remains valid for 24 hours. Depending on your requirement, you can increase or decrease it. We use the CLI prompt of a Cisco device to configure it. Access the switch's CLI prompt. We use the enable command to enter the privileged exec mode. We use the configure terminal command to enter the global configuration mode. This command defines the IP addresses we want to exclude or reserve. The DHCP server will not assign these addresses to the clients. Cisco routers and switches include a special configuration mode known as DHCP pool configuration mode. This mode allows us to create and configure DHCP pools. This command creates a DHCP pool and enters DHCP pool configuration mode. This command defines the range of IP addresses the DHCP server will offer to the clients. DHCP server automatically skips the IP addresses defined in the excluded IP list. This command defines the default gateway's IP address. This command defines the DNS server's IP address. DHCP server includes these addresses in the IP configuration. Exit DHCP pool configuration mode. DHCP server allows us to configure multiple DHCP pools for different IP ranges. We can create a separate DHCP pool for each IP range. DHCP uses the client's VLAN IP address to determine the IP pool from which it should offer the IP address. The client's VLAN is the VLAN that is configured on the switch port that is connected to the client. For example, if a client is connected to port F0-5 and VLAN 10 is configured on port F0-5, then the client's VLAN will be VLAN 10. By default, all switch ports belong to VLAN 1. This means, unless you create or configure additional VLANs, DHCP will use VLAN 1's IP address to determine the pool. This command enters VLAN 1's configuration mode. Now, assign an IP address from the configured pool. You can use an IP address from the excluded IP list. 
The main benefit of using an excluded IP address is the DHCP server never offers an excluded IP address to the client. Now change the interface state to up. Exit the VLAN. That's all configuration we need on the switch. Now we need to configure DHCP clients. To configure a device as a DHCP client, we need to change the way the device receives its IP configuration. A device can get its IP configuration in two ways, static and DHCP. In the static method, we manually assign an IP configuration to the device. In the DHCP method, the device automatically fetches an IP configuration from the DHCP server. As we can see here, the device received the IP configuration from the DHCP server. Now let's repeat the same process to configure this PC as a DHCP client. As we can see here, the PC received an IP configuration from the configured pool. Unlike PCs, on wireless devices, the default IP configuration mode is DHCP. Because of this, they automatically get IP configuration from the DHCP server as soon as the DHCP server comes online. As we can see here, these devices have already received their IP configuration from the DHCP server. To view the IP allocation, we can use the show IP DHCP binding command in the privileged exec mode. This command lists the allocated IP addresses. These are the allocated IP addresses. These are the MAC addresses of the clients who receive these IP addresses. The type of allocation is automatic. To view DHCP statistics, we can use the show IP DHCP pool command. This command needs the pool's name as an argument. The output of this command displays the number of total IP addresses in the configured range, available IP addresses, and least IP addresses. Let's create another network topology to understand DHCP server configuration steps on Cisco routers. Add a router to the workspace. We will use it to configure a DHCP server. Add two switches to the workspace. We will use them to connect end devices to the router. Add some end devices. We will use these devices to configure DHCP clients. Cisco routers use the same commands and configuration steps for DHCP server configuration that Cisco switches use. By following the same steps that we use to configure a DHCP server on a Cisco switch, we can configure a DHCP server on a Cisco router. Basically, both Cisco routers and switches run on Cisco IOS. A Cisco IOS is an operating system for Cisco devices. For different appliances, Cisco uses different variations of Cisco IOS. To keep consistency across all IOS, Cisco uses the same commands and configuration steps for the same task. For example, it uses the same commands and configuration steps for a DHCP server on routers and switches. In this lab, we have two networks, left network and right network. We connected the left network to the router's fast Ethernet 0-0 interface and the right network to fast Ethernet 0-1 port. We will configure two DHCP pools. We will use this pool for the left network. We will use this pool for the right network. Unlike switches, routers use interfaces IP addresses to determine the DHCP pools. A router's interface also works as the default gateway for the connected network. For example, the IP address of this interface will work as the default gateway for the left network. The IP address of this interface will work as the default gateway for the right network. Now let's assign IP addresses on both interfaces. To assign IP addresses to interfaces, we need to enter global configuration mode. Enter interface configuration mode. Use the IP address command to assign the IP address. Start the interface. By following the same steps, let us assign the IP address to the second interface. Assign an excluded or reserved IP address from the pool. Start the interface. As I mentioned earlier, DHCP configuration steps and commands are the same on both switches and routers. First, we create a range of excluded or reserved IP addresses. Then, we enter the DHCP pool configuration mode. In DHCP pool configuration mode, we configure the IP addresses we want to assign to DHCP clients. The most common IP addresses are the default gateway and DNS server's IP addresses. Create an IP range for DHCP clients. Exit the DHCP pool configuration mode. This pool will work for the left network. Now let's create another pool for the right network. 
First, create a range of reserved IP addresses. Now, create a new DHCP pool and enter DHCP pool configuration mode. In DHCP pool configuration mode, configure the default gateways and DNS server's IP addresses. Now configure the IP range for this pool. Exit the DHCP pool configuration mode. The router use interfaces IP addresses to determine pools from which it offers the IP addresses. Let's understand it through an example. Suppose, the router receives a DHCP request on the Fast Ethernet 0-1 interface. Fast Ethernet 0-1's IP address is 192.168.2.1. Since it belongs to the right network pool, it assigns an IP address from this pool. To verify it, we can check the IP configurations on DHCP clients connected to the Fast Ethernet 0-1 interface. Change the IP configuration mode to DHCP. As you can see here, it received its IP configuration from the right network pool. Let's check it on another client. As we can see here, it also received its IP configuration from the right network pool. Now, let's check the IP configuration on the DHCP clients connected to the left network pool. Change the IP configuration mode to DHCP. As we can see here, it received the IP configuration from the left network pool. Let's check it on another client. As we can see here, it also received the IP configuration from the left network pool. Now, let's verify the DHCP configuration on the router. We can use the show IP DHCP binding command to view the allocated IP addresses. These are allocated IP addresses from both pools. We can also use the show IP DHCP pool command to view the statics of both pools. These are the total available addresses in both pools. These are the ranges of IP addresses. These are the number of used excluded IP addresses. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.